What's going on guys and welcome to the first episode of my NHL 23 Montreal Canadiens franchise mode series. Decided to do Montreal after seeing a bunch of you guys commenting them. As well of course they just got the first overall pick in Slavkovsky so I thought it'd be fun trying to rebuild this team. Uh, you might have noticed actually there on the last screen top players are Suzuki, Kothel, and Dadanov. Price is not shown there as Price has actually gone down to a 70 overall. Um, EA has essentially put him on LTIR forever which he'll probably be. We know he's for sure missing this season. And there's a good chance he never plays hockey again, unfortunately. So we're going to have to find a you know, goalie for the future. 85 overall there does make us the lowest rated team in the Atlantic, as well as the entire Eastern Conference. So I think this first year, uh, we are trying to tank for Connor Bedard. In terms of the settings here, guys, of course, side cap will be on, along with computer traits, everything else turned off. And you guys want with the custom league, I'm not doing any of that for this franchise, just a normal one here with the Montreal Canadiens. I've got a bunch of ideas using custom leagues for other videos. And as always guys, the game style there is set to full sim, which is the most realistic. Injuries though turned off because they are super annoying to deal with. Period length there, 20 minutes. Franchise mode length will do 10 years. See if there's some sort of pop-up when you beat franchise. I doubt it though. Uh, difficulty superstar if we do kind of jump in. Uh, Tragically there set to hard. I think it just makes it a bit tougher. Medium I want to see is more realistic, but I don't mind the challenge. Um, in terms of syringe and scoring, I'm going to have that at high. I think uh, it makes it a bit better for scoring. Draft cost quality, prospect quality, both set to low. I think it makes it both harder as well as a bit more realistic because, you know, you only find a few good players outside the first round, which is kind of the case in real life. There's not really consistently good players after that first round. Uh, I think everything else here, though, looks okay. And also, too, guys, as the franchise mode loads in, I should mention I've gone through and adjusted a bunch of prospect potentials. So many of them were just way off, in my opinion. I also made a handful of created players, but obviously couldn't make too many because I wanted to get started here with the series. Like right here, you guys can see Adam Fantilli, 77 overall, high elite, but there's his stats, power forward, Jake Sanderson, 79, medium elite, Matthew Michkov there, 78, high elite. I saw some people say Fantilli might go too, so decided to actually drop Michkov from franchise to high elite. Uh, Nemec there, 77 medium elite, and finally a scare off, 75 high elite. And real quick guys, if you wouldn't mind, leave a thumbs up on this video for the start of NHL 23. It really helped me out. And so next year guys, I'll show you what the team is looking like before we start making any trades or free agent signings. Uh, team status there obviously is seller. So uh, new look here with the edit line screen. We got Duran, Suzuki, Cockle on the first line with a plus five. Gallagher, Doc, Dadnov on the second line. Hoffman, Dvorak, Anderson on the third with Evans, Monaghan, and Pitlick on the fourth. Defensively here, we got Matson, Weidman top, pair gain a plus one. Savard, Evans in second, with Norlander, Barron on the bottom pair. In terms of the goaltending, Allen starting, Montembeau backing him up. Uh, if you guys watched my other videos, you might know the power play now looks different. You can actually see where people set it up. So Suzuki's in front of the net, Danov's on the point, Caulfield, Monaghan there on the half boards, uh, Duran in the middle. Pretty cool to see that. And you can see that the plus five power play. The four man also shows how it sets up. We have no defensemen, I guess, on our power play. Interesting, but I'm not going to bother changing that right now because I do plan on making some changes. Um, AHL team, so Zikoski here is first line AHL. I think it makes more sense for him. He's a 78. Uh, we have tons of 80 plus forwards. I actually didn't even show you guys Scratch right now is Armia and Byron. I plan on probably trading both these guys if I can, um, especially Armia. Like, that's a big contract there. Hopefully, can at least, you know, give it away. Don't have to pay for someone to take it on. Uh, Yolan in there, 22, 77, medium top six, isn't a bad prospect. I'm trying to see, Emil Poirier, I remember it was like a first round pick, but uh, he never turned in anything. Defensively here, Madison Bowie, another guy really never panned out. Really don't think we have any good defensive prospects in the AHL right now. Now, having said that, we should have Kane Gooley. Um, is he in juniors? Because I'm pretty sure uh, this year he would qualify actually for the NHL. Okay, yeah, so he just scratched for whatever reason. As you can see here, Gooley, 2072, high top four. Uh, he's one of the guys I actually boost a little bit. Goalies, okay, I was worried Price would be, uh, you know, backup or something. So 70 overall there, you can see 750k for the next four years, which is essentially the same as LTIR. Um, so I'll show you guys all the trade values for this team, what we have to work with here. Obviously, got to implement a rebuild here. We really, if we don't get Bedard, we want Fantilli, we want Michka, we want somebody to kind of go along with Kothil, Tukoski, Suzuki, help carry this team. Curious to see how Doc and Gooley are going to progress with this team. Some other players that, you know, could turn out for us. Uh, Mysek, even Yolanin, if one of those guys are kind of less potential, actually ends up being a real player, would really help us out. Two first round picks, Florida's first rounder there, which once you all got in exchange for Ben Sherrod, then we have our first round pick. I actually just realized it's so nice now that uh, the first round picks are actually going to be accurate. So for instance, Arizona here is going to have so many uh, picks. Yeah, what is that? Three thirds there, a couple fourths. Uh, three seconds 2024. They had like three seconds this year. 
Chicago, too, probably has a ton of picks. Yeah, they have an extra first, extra second, extra third. So, uh, good to see. Finally, have you know, the accurate draft picks. So, I'm going to look around the league, guys, see, you know, what trades we can make. Um, also, too, could look in free agency to see if anyone's uh, good enough to sign. I know Sonny Milano would be the top player available. Alex Formington there thinks RFA, yeah, but Milano's there. Anton Strawman. Our defense is so bad that actually wouldn't be terrible. It could potentially like trade him away at the deadline. Uh, you got Rask there. Honestly, all these forwards probably aren't worth it. Like we have so many 80 plus forwards, but um, I wouldn't mind trying to get Strawman one year, one million bucks. You could flip for like a fourth at the deadline, and then Sonny Milano again. Calgary had a PTO for him, let him go. 82 overall, considering his production last year is actually really fair. I don't know why like really no teams give him a chance. We'll try 1.5 for one. And again, if we're trading away some forwards, we'll be fine in that regard anyways. Goaltending, there's nothing there. And I next you guys, I'm actually going to try and sign Ty Ronning. Shout out to X-Tech. Also shout out to X-Tech for uh, just having a son. If you guys didn't know that, definitely, you know, go and congratulate him on Twitter. But I'll make an offer on Ty Ronning there just to kind of help out the AHL team. All right, guys, so the first trade I'm trying to make here is Joel Armia, the Arizona Coyotes for seventh round pick. Again, just trying to get rid of that $3.4 million salary for the next three years. I will say I'm not a huge fan of these orange bars for, like, the trade value as well as uh, the salary cap space, I feel like they're kind of like, I don't know, I, I'm squinting looking at them. The green and the red also look to be slightly different color shades, but they're not terrible. Just not a huge fan of that orange down below. I think the yellow looked a lot nicer. Anyways, we'll see what they say to this. Trades rejected. Um, I mean, the seventh round pick actually did have more value, so I'm fine essentially losing him for nothing here if they'll just take him, which they do. They have a ton of cap space, so that worked out well. And what I'm thinking, guys, rather than trading Paul Byron, who I believe has the least amount of value on this team, even though... Armia has like the same rating and a worse contract. Is I'm gonna try and trade Dadnov because a guy like Hoffman here too is left. I'd like to kind of have a good season to make it easier to trade him. Um, same goes for even like Josh Anderson there. No value, but if we can have, you know have a decent season, it'll be easier to trade him um, at the deadline or even next summer. So I'm gonna move on just from Dadnov here. Coyotes like him. I mean I don't really mind giving them to Coyotes because Coyotes uh, their picks should be pretty high. Like they, if they do well, I'd be really surprised. Although their picks are on the block. And now next year, guys, trying to make a trade with the Calgary Flames to get Connor Zeri in exchange for taking Milan Lucic's contract. Obviously, Flames are getting a good player in Dadanov, a three overall sniper. If they plan to stay with Hubert Doe, could definitely see him producing. Zeri's 2074, medium top six. Usually, you know, last year ended up being like a high 70, low 80. Maybe this year he'll grow a little bit more. We'll see what the Flames say, even though the value is, you know, more on their side. Trades rejected. The value just isn't where it needs to be. I feel like Lucic, though, they know like they're losing a pretty bad contract. Still, though, I mean, I would give them like a fourth round pick there with Dadnov to kind of smooth it over. Trades accepted. Okay, so that worked out well. This isn't good, guys. Ronnie rejected my offer, signed with Iowa Wild instead as our roster is full. I thought we traded away enough guys for that not to happen, but I guess, you know, Strawman accepted, so he probably took a spot. Same with Milano, so we had two free spots, not three. And that's all right. And after all those trades and signing, guys, getting an updated look at the lines. We got Duran, Suzuki, Caulfield there on the first line. Gallagher, Doc, Milano on the second. Hoffman, Dvorak, Anderson on the third. With Evans, Monahan, Pitlick on the fourth. Uh, defensively there, I think it's still the same. But uh, Strawman, of course, added on the bottom pair. Goalies, no change. I'll show you guys the power play here. So I can see Hoffman up front. We got Caulfield, Suzuki, Duran, then Matson at the point. And I'll show you guys the strategies here, too. So you can see distributor there, Suzuki. He's the one passing the puck around. Chocolate finisher, as he's got the snipe zone ability, also I think he's just got the best shot in general. Puck carrier Suzuki, so he's the one entering the zone with the puck, trying to start off the uh, cycle or whatever, or just dump it in. Power play line two, you guys can see the rules there. Uh, four man power play, four man power play two, not the greatest, but that's okay, because we don't really want to be good anyways. Uh, PK here, you can see Monahan, Dvorak, Edmondson, Servard. Uh, PK two, Gallagher, Evans. You've actually got three PK lines now, which is kind of cool before. Uh, you only had two. My third one, uh, not really the best. And it's because Norlander there is getting an X, where everyone else has a check mark. So I think there's actually just no other option. Three man penalty kill, you can see, also isn't that great. So, I mean, for now, it's fine. I'm sure I can, like, kind of play around with it to figure it out. AHL wise, so playing on its first line, so Koski, we got Zeri and Yolanin. Hopefully, they all do well. Byron there on the second line is just buried in the AHL for now because he's only got one year left anyway. So has a little bit of speed, should be more. Uh, he's playing Lucic, actually. Bottom six, really nothing great. Defensively, also, I've got, we got Baron, I guess. We got Gooley, hoping they grow. Caden Primo, hopefully, has a good season in the AHL. So, again, we're trying to tank here for Bedard, but at the same time, want some guys to play well, up their value, can trade them for more at the deadline, or even 
at the draft. So in terms of the ratings here, guys, look at Caulfield, the size difference compared to Hedman. We've got 91 offense, 86 defense, 81 goaltending. Let's see how we do here. I feel like our defense is pretty terrible, so um, hopefully it's you know what allows us to truly tank. And so at the Christmas break here, guys, we're actually doing a little bit too good. We're currently 19, 15, and 2. We've just won three straight games. Uh, we were actually doing even better than that in the first month or so. So uh, where does that put us in the division? Third place, we're in a playoff spot. I'm trying to tank for Bedard and we're in a playoff spot. How typical is that? Gallagher's got almost a point per game. I mean, I really don't get it. We could, like, trade away Allen to truly, truly tank. But, like... I don't know. If, if this team makes the playoffs, then whatever. I guess uh, we're going on a Cinderella run. Also, you guys go through here at the AHL team. You can see Yolanin's got 22 points in 32 games. AHL team's not doing great at all. They got a negative record, last in the division. Also, too, I was really hoping Slikowski would be leading the team in scoring. And so at the trade deadline now, guys, the record of 31, 25, and 5. How this team is positive with our defense, I have no idea. Uh, 67 points, tied with the Red Wings there. Uh, we're not in a wild card spot, though. We're win behind the Hurricanes. The good news is, too, the Panthers are actually currently out of a playoff spot. So imagine that Panthers pick was good enough for Connor Bedard. There's no, like, lottery protection on the picks in this game. So if you have the pick, you have it no matter what. Gallagher there just under a point per game. Uh, Zary there is now lean score in the AHL, 36 and 54. So we'll get to the deadline. Really, we're in a very tough spot. I don't know, like, we're fighting for a playoff spot. We're out of it now. I'm not trying to make the playoffs this year. So I'd say conservative seller. Uh, I don't want to be probably too crazy, although I guess there's really nothing to lose if the right deal's on the block for us. Patty Kane there. One year left, just like real life. Number one player on the trade block. Makes a lot of sense. Come on, Iserman. Dylan Larkin shouldn't be here. He should be extended already. Ryan Pollock, Spurgeon. Klingberg there makes sense, I think, because the Ducks probably aren't going to be a playoff spot this year. He's going to try and do like the Taylor Hall, just move the deadline and sign somewhere next summer. Bertuzzi could be uh, if the Red Wings are in a playoff spot. Brodeen. I feel like Minnesota's always got Spurgeon Brodeen on the block for some reason. David Perron, Semyon Varlamov, Ryan Ellis. Um, okay, so let's see what else is out there. Obviously, I'm not really looking for star players, which is what they're showing us right now. I'm looking more for prospects. Also, Kuzlovskoski here. 12 goals and 19 assists. So 31 points right now in 55 games. Not terrible, but, you know, not the best either. And I'm looking through all the teams, guys. I realized I forgot to drop Oscar Kleffbaum's rating to, like, a 70 to represent him being on the LTIR because he's probably done playing hockey as well. Also, too, it's kind of crazy. I'm pretty sure last year he was an 82, and so he jumped up in rating to an 85 after just being out with an injury, which I will never understand how, you know, player ratings change after they sat out a whole year. And as I'm going through here, guys, looking for teams to trade with, there's one thing I noticed I really don't like on this new game. Let's say I select Savard here to trade. If I click Add Ad Set, you actually can't tell, aside from the very bottom there where it now says Remove. Like, before it would all light up, whatever. Here, there's nothing showing that. Uh, I'm not really sure why they got rid of that. I feel like it's just something so small that was really convenient. And now that's not the case. Now, the first trade I'm trying to make here, guys, is Mike Hoffman in a fifth to Chicago for Tampa Bay second. Pretty equal value. I feel like it's actually maybe even on our side a bit, so... A second and a seventh. They say no, just the second. There we go, okay. So Mike Hoffman actually had two years left. I don't mind getting out from under that contract. Again, trying to bring in, you know, younger players. I feel like Sonny Milano also has a good amount of value there. He's definitely gonna want to raise from 1.5. He's got 49 points in 62 games right now. He's actually got quite a bit of value. I wonder if we could even get like a first round pick for him. Look at that, Cardo's first round pick is pretty much equal to Sonny Milano. I mean, it's going to be a late first, but still, I we signed him for free. What does Colorado say here? Rejected. The value is just a bit low. I mean, okay, we could throw in, I don't know, maybe like a seventh rounder next year. And there we go. That's literally all it took. You guys might notice too, it's 11.30 mark now. I definitely took my time, you know, making these trades. Basically, I'm just looking all around trying to find like the best deals. And unfortunately, there's really no great prospects on the block. I might move Duran here. I'm um, trying to think... Where would be a good place? I usually like trading my guys like to the other conference, the Western Conference. Um, Nashville Predators for Duran. What can we get back? A second round pick. He's on an expiring deal. Let's see. We could maybe do, I don't know, Vegas fourth plus Duran for Nashville second. If we don't plan on bringing him back, I think this is good value still. And they say yes. Okay, so let's look at how many draft picks we have now. Just straight away a few like, you know, middle sticks wingers. And we've got three firsts and three seconds for this draft, which will also help us, you know, finish lower in the standings. I think that's a pretty good deadline for us. Now, take a look and see what everyone else did. You can see we actually made, like, the last three trades. Carolina there, got Jacob Merrill, 
Um, let's see. Mark Pishik there and Ostley both go to Pittsburgh from Detroit. Ryan Donato to Florida. Um, let's see what else is going on. Nevera there to the Jets. Domi and Athanasiu both go to Pittsburgh, which is kind of funny because they signed together um, in Chicago. Chicago got Owen Pickering for those two. Really good defensive prospect. Ryan Strom to the Devils. Evgeny Svechnikov to Vegas. Zach Dean to the Sharks. Oliver Wallstrom to the Flames. Uh, Varlamov there returns to the Avalanche. Interesting. Uh, Chaika there to the Coyotes. It's Carson Soucy the Canucks. Philip Brober to the Flyers for Travis Sanheim. That's a big trade. Troy Stetcher there and Nemeth both go to Florida. Noel Gunler in Minnesota for Ryan Hartman and Alex Legoss gets another pretty good trade. Zach Parise, Scott Mayfield to Toronto. Wow, okay. So, you know, some pretty decent trades here. No blockbusters, but still uh, good to see the movement. And so after the trade deadline, guys, here's an updated look at the lines. First line there is now Gallagher, Suzuki, Caulfield, Anderson, Doc, Dvorak on the second, Pitlick, Monaghan, Evans on the third with Byron, Stevens, and Lucic on the fourth. Uh, defensively, there's actually the same. I totally forgot to trade Strawman, so maybe you could get like a seventh or a sixth from at the deadline. Uh, decided to keep Slavkowski in the AHL pretty much simply because I don't have a chance to win the Calder next year. But if we called him up now, uh, he'd play too many games. Two, I think you know he's playing pretty well there with Zary. So uh, give him a chance to maybe you know make the playoffs in the AHL. Actually, I should double check where were they at at this point. Uh, second last in the division. So yeah, probably not making the AHL playoffs. But you never know. Maybe they go on a run. Uh, hopefully, to the NHL can actually. Finish pretty low here. You should give us better odds at Connor Bedard. And so this team is so strange, guys. It actually looked like they're going to make the playoffs after the deadline. Uh, you can see at one point here, they won five of seven games with one of the two losses being a shootout loss. But then after that, they followed it up with nine straight losses there to end the year, starting with Buffalo there in OT, ending with Boston. That's crazy. So nine straight losses in the year, and we finished 86 points, only five points out of a playoff spot. So, yeah, if we just go 500 there in the last nine games, we actually probably squeak in, which is kind of incredible. Um, 86 points have actually tied us with the Devils there for last in the Metro. So we're tied there for the third worst team in the East. The West, though, the Wild. Wow, the Wild did so bad. Coyotes, Blackhawks, all worse than us. Gold Knights, Kraken, Oilers, Sharks, same point total there. So we have a chance at Bedard. Not a great chance, but still. Um, Panthers, too, missed the playoffs. So we have their pick. Avalanche won the conference, so unfortunately... Uh, that will not be a lottery pick. Brennan Gallagher there, 74 points. I'll see how the rest of the players on this team did. Uh, behind him there, you got Kirby Dock with 70, so definitely should go up from 83. And he's on a great contract right now. Suzuki also had 70. Caulfield, 65, ain't bad. Dvorak, 41. Wyman, 34. Anderson, 32. Savard, 32. Monan, 25. He was playing fourth line a lot of this year anyways, as, I guess with PK too. So really not too bad. Goalies. Jake Allen, under 900 save percentage, a 3.31 goals against. Um, isn't the best. Now, Sim engine scoring is on high, but I think also, too, we had terrible defense. AHL team, Yolan in 51 points. Zeri, 46. Lukoski, 46. Uh, Pizzetta there, 45. After that, really nothing too great. Uh, Gooley, 11 points, 71 games. He did go up one overall. Now, King Primo stats here, 0.905 save percentage, 2.57 against, the 7 shutouts. I feel like he's actually not that bad. Now, I'll take a look at the entire league here, guys. See who won the Art Ross Trophy. Johnny Goudreau with the Blue Jackets. 109, followed by Matthews there at 52 goals. Ovi at 60 with 100 points. Um, so even on, wow, Sim Engine scoring such a high. Only three guys there at 100 plus points. You then have McKinnon, Malkin, Crosby, Line, Kane, Marner. Where's like McDavid and Dreisaitl? That's very, very interesting. McDavid 83, okay, so just over a point per game. Very surprising. Um, check the goals here. So Ovi, Matthews, Line. I feel like, you know, those three kind of make sense. Defensive scoring, Hedman there is actually first above Fox and Carr. Goalies here, Merz Lincoln's most wins with the Blue Jackets. Um, save percentage there, Huso, 33 games played, but Saros, 0.914 for a starter. Goals against, also Saros, 2.62. So should be winning the Vezina if you ask me. Rookie skaters, oh wow, that's right. Edmonton traded Robert for Sanheim. That was a big trade. So most points for a rookie. Wow. Alexander Carey, 35 points. Outscored Beneers. He had 12 minutes of ice time at night, so I think he was definitely playing fourth line, which really sucks. Um, Slavkowski could have won the goalie this year so easily. 35 points for the leading uh, rookie scorer, Alexander Carey. I thought if he played last season, um, which I'm pretty sure, I thought he did, unless he was injured, 
All right, guys, so I just checked, and I was right. Alexander Carrier did play last season. He had 30 points in 77 games. The issue is, for whatever reason, his 2022 season isn't in the game, so he gets counted as a rookie here, which basically means he just stole the Calder Trophy from Matty Beniers, which is kind of funny, but also kind of sad. Like, this shouldn't be happening. Um, yeah, what a weird rookie class. McTavish, 26. He was also fourth line, still got to an 84, though. Power, 25. Terrell, plus, minus. Yeah, this is one of the worst rookie classes I've ever seen. Now, in terms of the standings here, guys, play for actually the AHL team. As you can see, we did miss the playoffs there with 73 points. Now, the NHL team, curious to see where we finished the entire league. First place was Washington Capitals, 112 points. Next, four teams of the Eastern Conference. So, Colorado just won in the West. Both New York teams missed, finishing 13-14 respectively. Wow. Anaheim gets in at 20. We only had one less point for the Anaheim Ducks, who make the playoffs. So, East is just that much better. Uh, we finished 24th there, so we can jump up to first overall, but obviously our odds aren't that great. Buffalo there actually finished last, 59 points. Not a great season at all for them. Most goals for there was Pittsburgh, least amount was Buffalo. Uh, I don't see us on either, so I guess we're in the middle of the pack. Uh, lowest goals against the Avalanche, highest goals against Arizona Coyotes. Uh, we actually did have like the seventh highest goals against. So yeah, what's crazy is we probably make the playoffs if we don't lose the last nine straight games of the season. And I think I would have rathered that than just kind of been in no man's land here where we're not in the playoffs, nor are we, you know, bad enough to have a great shot at darts. So wasn't really successful, I guess, in playing bad. But, you know, we shipped guys out. And I feel like this game, when you trade away players, your team plays better. And then when you stock up the deadline, bring in some superstars, they start to play worse. Like, it just never seems to make sense to me. And now look at this, guys. This shows you just how weird the sim can be. Playoffs are now complete, and your Stanley Cup champions are the Anaheim Ducks. I feel like I was just mentioning like how they won one time and like it's always so weird. Buffalo first overall, looking to get Connor Bedard, are you kidding me? New Jersey jumps from 11 to 2, that should have been us. Uh, Montreal, so we went from 9 to 10 and we also stayed at 13 with the Florida pick. So we actually should have done a couple spots better if we wanted to jump to 2 there where New Jersey was. I mean, 10 and 13 isn't that bad, uh, should still be getting some decent players, but uh, no Connor Bedard like I was hoping for. And I'm next year, guys, will take a look at the playoff tree and see what the Ducks went through. So they beat the Avalanche in the first round in six games. I mean, fair play to them if they're taking out the Avalanche. Blues there in five, Kings in six, and then the Pittsburgh Penguins in seven. I don't know how the Ducks pulled that one off, but again, uh, respect to them for that. Uh, so individual awards here. Goudreau got the Art Ross along with the Hart. Having James Norris. Goudreau also got the Lady Bing. Carrier there got the Calder again. What a weird rookie class. Zegers Khan Smythe, oh my, everyone's saying he was overrated, but I guess, you know, in this game he's actually a bit overrated. Uh, Saros Vesna Trophy, that's cool. Yorgi there, William Jennings, Sherrod, Bill Masterton, uh, Flyers coach Jack Adams, Kopitar Selkie, Goudreau also got the Ted Lindsay, and then Ovi there, Marisha Shard. So Goudreau took home four wards, which is pretty nuts. Uh, Charlotte Checkers there, when they called their cup for the second time in three years. Obviously, we didn't win any of the team awards. Individual here, Jack Quinn, most points, also had MVP. James Neal, most goals in the NHL. Shane Pinto, best rookie. Uh, Chalowski, their best defenseman. Calvin Picard, best goalie. Donato, MVP of the playoffs. Jack Quinn, sportsmanship. Fitzgerald there, community involvement. Aaron Dell, lowest goals against. Okay, so unfortunately for us, no awards in the first season. And uh, didn't really tank as much as I was hoping we would. I thought, you know, we had terrible defense. Jake Allen wasn't really that great a goalie, but... Uh, somehow our team played a bit better than we expected. Now look at this, guys. Joe Thornton finally retires at the age of 43. He remained a free agent the entire year, which is kind of crazy because he was 79, which isn't too bad of a rating. Shea Theodore also calls it quits. Ryan Kessler, Filipula, Seabrook, Bozak, Como there. A lot of other older players. Chris Russell actually re-signed with Edmonton, but just to play on their AHL team. Justin Alvocator there retired as a free agent as well. Goalies, you got Mike Smith retiring. So basically, a lot of the LTR guys are retired. Carey Price, though, if you noticed, did not retire, so... Uh, he's holding out a bit longer. Now we're going to get to the draft here again. I mean, we could potentially package 10 and 13 and move up into the draft. Uh, first pick on the block, though, is Vegas there at 5. Let's take a look and see, too. Are there any you know, created guys at the top here? Okay, so Bedardi is going 1, medium franchise. Michkov 2, Fantilli 3, Zaitsev there 4, I believe made up. Same with this Kuperinen guy. Uh, Leo Carlson there is at 6, Vildenstein 7. Cam Allen, Callum Ritchie, Edward Sale. I made all these guys be elite because they're projected top 10 picks in the draft. I think Danielson's like a high top six. Same with Musty. Dvorsky's medium elite. Uh, so getting Dalibor Dvorsky at 13 is actually a complete steal for us. We complement him with Sale. So we'd still be getting two medium elites 
even though we're not getting, oh my gosh, Jaeger there too. I think I'll probably go Dvorsky and Jaeger because uh, Sale, I mean, I did the ratings. He's only like a 66, I think. I didn't actually touch his rating. I only changed the potential. Dvorsky and Jaeger. Benson, I think, is also medium elite. Oh my gosh, if we could get back into the first round, just go like 13, 14, 15. That would be nuts. And as I say that, guys, look at this. Casper Hulton in here at 21, also guaranteed medium elite. On um, HLTA's two years, but still, what value. Take a look at potential here. I um, wonder, like, how many other, you know, good guaranteed medium elites are going to go later. Any goalies? Okay, no goalies. That's all right. And then gems here. Michkov, this low lead at 176. Turnbull. All right, guys, so I'm not sure if the range is going to go for this. We're going to try and get a third round pick from them to drop back two spots from 10 to 12. See what they say here. Trades rejected, close to fair value. I mean, yeah, it's close to fair value. What about a fourth there for a third? We move up 15 spots there late to move down two spots early. I was gonna say, I think that's probably a steal for them. So we're picking 12 and 13 now. I wanna get either the 14th or the 15th pick. The Red Wings there are 14. The Rangers 16 picks on the block. Maybe we make a trade for the Rangers 16. I just realized they have two picks as well. Um, 10 and 16. All right, guys, so right here's the offer making the Rangers for 16th overall. I'm offering them 26th pick there from the Avalanche. Of course, we got for Sonny Milano. And then Nashville there, second rounder. Value is pretty equal. I think they'll go for this. And they do. Okay, so we're making some moves here. We're now picking 13, 14, and 16. Um, 16, though, is a little late, I think. We want Zachary Benson. Yeah, so Dvorsky there ranked 13, Jaeger 14, Benson's 15. So we need to move up like one spot, although we could get Halton there, guaranteed medium lead, but I think it'd actually be cool to get like these three here. Like this could be just in an insane core, an insane line for the future. So let's see if Eisenman will take a third round pick here to move up two spots from 16 to 14. He says no. Um, okay, second rounder seems like a lot. I think I offered them the 90th though, maybe the 73rd gets it done. Still no, but they did say quite close. Um, throw on like a fifth round or two. There we go. So basically I'm about to show uh, Don Sweeney and the Boston Bruins how it's done. So I just sent you guys to the 12th pick. You can see Sale just went 66 medium elite. Quentin Musty there at 10. Allen at 9. Richie there at 8. Uh, Lindstein 7. Kuparin in there 6. Carlson 5. Zaitsev 4. Fantilli 3, Michkov 2, and of course Bedard there first overall. I was wondering if maybe he would grow during the season because he has franchise potential, but he doesn't. So he stays at his rating, which is why I think, you know, definitely when I start editing the roster fully, I'm going to make him like an 82 to make sure he comes out of the draft uh, NHL ready, you know, to play in a top six role. Now, our next pick here, or I should say our next three picks, um, not overthinking it. First one here will be Dalibor Dvorsky, 72, medium elite. Um, the next one we're going to do is going to be Braden Jaeger, of course, from the Moose Jaw Warriors, 72 medium elite. And then finally, it'll be Zachary Benson here from the Winnipeg Ice, who is 69 medium elite. So looking at these guys here, Dvorsky, you can see a ton of X factors on him. Now, this is really cool, guys. So if you've watched my range review video, you would have noticed that Dvorsky had no X factor when we were looking at him in the edit player screen. And as you can see, I just drafted him with an entire suite of X factors, zone ability there, send it all those superstar abilities. Uh, Jaeger as well, look at that. Shutdown, which is super strange for him. Uh, he's a two-way forward, though probably should be a sniper. Um, this is so weird, the player that they, why does he have three defensive X-Factors? Um, whatever, so they're just to show you. And then look at that, Zachary Benson also has a ton of X-Factors. So this is new in NHL 23. It looks like the prospects will actually develop X-Factors as they play. It looks to be based on their player type, because Benson there's a playmaker, and he got the third eye zone ability with like wheels, puck on a string. Z Jaeger's a two-way forward, got a bunch of defensive ones. Dvorsky, playmaker, got send it. Seems to kind of, you know, be the theme. All right, now picking the second round, guys, the ninth pick. Um, I'll show you the rest of the first round if you guys are kind of just curious to see the prospects that went. So Danielson there, high top six. Uh, Crystal, Gauthier, Levi. Uh, that Hulton and dude, 69 medium elite, same as Zachary Benson. Uh, Kostit's in there. Koche, high top nine. He should have been probably uh, medium top six, whatever. And now just look at the rest of the players here. Dragon 7, 67 medium top four. Not a bad pick at all there by the Rangers. I think that was actually with our pick. Um, early second round. Kalen Lynn there went first in the second round. Goligoski, what a pick by the Wild. 77 medium top four. Wow, that is such a good pick. So we'll see what we can do here, hopefully. You know, find a bit of a diamond in the rough. 
Mitchell Marsh, 50-50 chance to be medium elite. Alex Petrangelo there, 3 on NHL ETA. I mean, we have just taken, you know, three forwards. I do like taking goalies too, though. Often, you know, goalies will have that medium elite potential. Now, Marsh here is not only ranked the highest, he's also got the best potential left, so I feel like we just kind of have to take him. And 64 medium top four, that's not bad at all. And we now have another second round pick here, guys. Hope we can hit on this one. Um, I know if they have a face, and I don't really recognize them, that they're probably not, uh, you know, great rating or potential. Like, Maxim Metzikov here, I think, is medium bottom six. Carson Bjarnson there, I do not think is medium elite potential. And you know what, guys? I'm actually going to see if the Columbus Blue Jacks will trade their second round pick next year for the Tampa Bay Lightning second this year. Uh, looks like their second is a bit more value. Basically, there's really no one there I want. I'll throw in a fifth next year, I guess. That gets it done. So hopefully, uh, you know, that next year's second will give us something better. I feel like I picked 90 here. I'm honestly going to take uh, who I was already eyeing to take anyways, which is that gem who's ranked uh, 176. There's really just no one else. I mean, I guess I could take a chance on somebody because I can probably still wait on him. This Bjornsson guy, I really do wonder what he is. I almost know for a fact it's probably like medium fringe at best. Now this Mueller player here could be medium top six, like 50-50. We'll take a chance. Uh, me and bottom six, that's what I was afraid of. Okay, so the next pick here, 169. Hopefully can get our gem. I'm pretty sure he's like coming right up. I want to say he was ranked 170. Uh, yeah, Turnbull there, 176. Definitely cut it close. 49 overall, but low league potential. So obviously it was a pretty good draft for us. Uh, we drafted with those back-to-back-to-back -back -back picks. And actually that reminds me, I did want to trade Strawman because I don't see us bringing him back. Let's see if they'll give us a 7th round pick next year for his rights. Trades rejected. Um, okay, I feel like Edmonton would be good. So Edmonton and Strawman for the Sharp 7th rounder. And there we go. So hopefully we just moved up some spots in next year's 7th round. But honestly, could have dropped back too if like the Sharks end up you know playing better. So that is it, guys, for the first draft. I feel like, again, we did so well. Dvorsky, Jaeger, Benson. Like, are you kidding me? And I just resigned some scouts, guys. If you're curious how I set it up, basically, it's all amateur scouts. As pro scouts, it won't really matter when you have Fog War off. I always do two in the WHL, OHL, Q and JHL, trying to get A-plus for all of them. Uh, two in each U.S. region. Again, A-plus for all. Then I've got the European spots. SHL, Liga, I double up on. Just trying to hit, you know, one in each region. I find that's the best way to, you know, scout good prospects. I actually did forget to assign scouts until about halfway through the season two, so I feel like that's probably why we didn't find as many, you know, gems this year. And actually, speaking of gems, guys, I should show you my head coach, because I think we're going to keep him the entire time. It's not too bad there, A-. minus. You see his stats are pretty solid, three A's, three B's. Coach influence and teaching are the most important ones, but uh, you can get better over the year. Staff chemistry there, 62% also isn't terrible. But so we're now at the resign phase. You can see Suzuki there, 88 overall, went up a little bit. Gallagher, 87, actually went up quite a bit. I want to say it was like an 83, so he went up by 4. Doc only went up by 1, even though he actually had a really good year. Like 70 points, 82 games for him. High top 6. I don't know how he's going to grow more than that. Caulfield's going to want some money. 4.8 for 5 years. That's actually really, really reasonable. 6, 7. I'm going to go long-term deal on Caulfield here because... Playing first line, putting up points. Let's do five and a half for eight years. Um, good to see him actually ask for something somewhat reasonable. Monaghan, I don't mind bringing back as a bomb six center. Um, for that money, I'm not sure. We'll have to kind of see how much we're going to have. Should be a lot. Uh, Lucic could keep as actually like a fourth line grinder. Kind of exactly what you're looking for. I wouldn't mind one year there at a million bucks. Paul Byron's got some speed, but I think I could probably let him go. Uh, Yolanin should stay in the AHL for at least the next few years, so we'll sign him to a two-way deal. And in regards to those three first-round picks, guys, I think Jaeger and Benson are just going to send back down to Junior. I still can't believe the X-Factors Jaeger got there. Again, those are all from, like, the Sims, so <laughs> because he's a two-way forward, that is so funny. I don't think I've ever seen a forward with this shut-down zone ability. Uh, Dvorsky, though, will be playing in the AHL, so I'll get him locked up immediately. I'll have to deal with some of these AHL contracts, too. And now looking at our cash base here, guys, we've got $31.722 million. I uh, definitely can't afford to bring back Sean Monaghan, but I don't know about the three years. I'm thinking let's do two years at $2 million. See what he says to that. In terms of goaltending, Allen's extension just kicked in, so he's making 3.85 for the next two years. Montembeau's locked up. Uh, we got Primo there, who could be the backup, but I don't mind him being the HL starter for one more year. Lucic rejected the offer. Didn't like the fact he didn't play much last year, even though it was because he was playing the HL team. Uh, Harris accepted. Monaghan wants more term. Coffee accepted, which is great. That was actually the most important contract. You only accepted two. Logan Mayu there, Sobolev, uh, Dvorsky, Kapanen, okay. I'll try 2.2 million for Monaghan. I'd rather give him a bit extra money than 
extra term. And then for Lucic, I'll also give like a little bit of extra money too. And Lucic said yes, he just wanted that extra 100k, I guess. Monahan wanted the extra 200k. So there we go. I uh, still have 25.5 million in cap space. Basically, we gotta spend that on some defensive free agents. We got 482 pluses. I think Baron and Norlander seeing a couple more years in the AHL. Same goes for Caden Gooley. Uh, goalies could sign somebody. Uh, they you know, start instead of Allen forward wise. We need at least one more NHL forward, I would say, unless like one of these random guys grows, which I really don't see happening. All right, guys, so it's not a free agency period. Let's go take a look and see who's available. We do have some money to spend here. Wow. David Pasternak, 12.3 million for seven years, 92 overall. I mean, that'd be insane. To bring it there as an RFA, hasn't signed a new contract yet with the Senators. Same with Zegers there, there's a 91. That, that's why his 87 rating was way too high for the only potential. Like, Zegers being a 91 already after one season, as good as Kaprizov, a bunch of other like NHL superstars. 99 <laughs> offensive awareness for Zegers after one season with like literally perfect puck skills, which isn't actually the worst thing, the perfect puck skills, but the 94 defense awareness, 99 offense awareness, and like the insane shot. <laughs> they made him so OP just because he's on the cover. That's hilarious. Dylan Larkin's available. One of my favorite players. I feel like I would love to get him. One, two punch down the middle with him and Suzuki and all those young guys coming. John Klingberg, three other number one defensemen. Patrick Kane could bring in. Uh, if it's like NHL 22, Kane always does so on the sim. Glad I traded Milano. He wants 8.2 million. After pointing up 49 points. Oh my god. Did this guy not learn his lesson after you know asking for too much money this year, I think? Patrice Bergeron, also free agent, wants 7.5. Could bring him home to Quebec. I don't know how Boston fans would feel about that. Michael Bunting, Pacioretty, could also bring back to Montreal. A ton of options available to us here. Let's take a look at goalies next. Freddie Anderson there. Um, Ilya Samsonov is an RFA. Okay, never mind. Tristan Jerry, 4.5 for 87. That's so reasonable. Uh, Nolja Victor actually went down by 184. Varlamov 86, 3.5, but he is 35, so he's probably gonna start getting worse. Where Jerry, you know, two years at 28 years old, so he's 30, is not bad at all. I mean, the 2024 drafts Kivaharju. I'm actually more worried about the 2025 draft Michael Misa and 2026 with Gavin McKenna. So if we happen to make the playoffs next year, I wouldn't mind it. Jerry 2087, two years, 4.75 mil, with Allen backing him up. That could actually be. A pretty solid goalie tandem. Um, let's check here two ways and we'll check potentials. Lennox 2070 available. Why did no one sign him? Rodrigue, Markinen, Anuin, Dostal. So again, like some solid prospects not getting signed for some reason. Now, if Jerry says yes, we're gonna have Montembeau and Primo in the AHL. I feel like Lennox might be the play just because he is three years younger. He could grow more than seven overall in those three years, so. Uh, we'll go for it. I guess, actually, you know what? If Jerry says yes, i probably just trade away uh, Montembeau, honestly. Forwards here, Alex Nylander, 25.75 is pretty much done. See if there's anyone else that stands out to us. Tyler Madden, 23.77. I did let go a ton of AHL players, so he can get some ice time with us, maybe grow a bit. This time I could actually sign Ty Ronnie rather than uh, messing it up like last time. Jacob Locko here, 23.76 VM Top 9 is not bad at all. Uh, especially, like, yeah, I don't know. That's just for a free player. That's pretty good. Uh, Sokolov, same thing. Sniper there on the uh, Senators. He's actually pretty good. Medium top nine. Give him like a three-year deal and see if, you know, maybe he can tear up the AHL. I feel like Alex Nealer and Mason Shaw are also both worth signing just because medium top six potential. You never know if they have like one good season they could grow. Shaw, though, wanted way too much there on a two-year. Now, next we actually have to look at the real players. So, Jerry sent like four million to. We still have 20 million could get Patty Kane, 94 overall. Uh, could get Dylan Larkin, Vessel Line in there. Oh, that's sorted by potential, sorry. Uh, let's sort it by rating here. So Kane, Pashnak, Zegers, Dabrinkit, Larkin, Pershon. Uh, Klingberg would be nice too. We really do need defense. Just so many options. All right guys, so I'm thinking first things first, I'm making an offer on Larkin. Obviously, like I was saying, my favorite player, 26 years old also. I think it's like the youngest guy here at the top of the list. 11 million bucks for him, that was a lot of money, but I mean again, first line centers don't come available that often, still has one more year left to grow. 11 million for six years, let's lock it in, we'll see if we can get him. Then after that, Bergeron 37, 7.5, I mean we could do like a one year for him, but I think we're okay, like we have Dvorak, we have Doc, we have some decent uh, two way forwards. Pasternak, 12.3 million, it's just, it's a ton of money, and you have to overpay, so... 
I feel like Larkin can end up being closely rated, plus hopefully Kotka ends up being kind of a sniper like Pasternak. Kane's also old, so I'm thinking help with the defense. We signed John Klingberg. Now he's 30, so we pay pay until he's 35. Oh man, that's just so much money, 10.8 million. Honestly, maybe instead of Klingberg, we go after like Clefbaum, 29 years old, 85 overall. So let's see, Clefbaum, four years, 5.5 million. I think I like this a little bit better than Klingberg at like 11. I think it's a bit more money to play with. Um, I feel like we could actually potentially sign Bergeron at this point with Larkin and Clefbaum. Bergeron again, you know, return home to Quebec, his final season. Just like the ultimate defensive center there. Look at that de-awareness, face-off, stick check. Probably just like I said, pass on Pasternak. And although him and Kane definitely gonna put up more points than Bergeron. It's so tough, you know what I think? I'm just gonna wait for now, because Ryan O'Reilly is there too. So maybe in a week, their prices come down. We'll see what Larkin says. Incoming trade offer, third round pick for Lucic and a fifth. I literally had Lucic as a throw in to get Zeri. I mean, I feel like he'd be a decent fourth liner, but for a third round pick, I have to say yes. Thank you to Buffalo. Hopefully Lucci doesn't fight too many of our guys. Uh, Sock Lover Jex, not really interested in two-way offers. I'm pretty sure he showed up as a two-way player. Ty Ronnie though accepted, Shaw accepted, Madden. Uh, Locko, not interested in two-way, I swear he also showed up there. Nylander, Lennox, okay. Dylan Larkin goes back to Detroit. You know what, if he's not gonna slide with us, I want him to go back to Detroit. Clefbaum though did sign, same with Tristan Jerry. Okay. All right guys, I'm looking for AMT again. We have 17 million to spend, Pashnak's now gone, but like I said, that's okay. Patty Kane's there. Same with Patrice Bergeron. Ryan O'Reilly's also gone. Oh, wow. We could get Bergeron and Kane each on one-year deals. Like I said, try and win it in 2024. And then, you know, if we're not good, we just go total rebuild for 25-26. For or if we are good, then we can kind of just, you know, keep building on that momentum. Let's throw offers on both these guys. Again, we have really nothing to lose. So Patty Kane will do a one-year 9-5, and Bergeron will do a one-year 7-7-5. Uh, seven, seven, See what they say. Now look at this, guys. Connor Timmons is available. 24-77, medium top four. Uh, I think I want him. Oh, he kind of gets expensive. Okay, one year, though, 975k. Uh, could be a really good help to the AHL team. Even maybe be six defensemen in the NHL. See what Kane and Bergeron say here. Uh, Timmons said yes. There we go. Wait on the two vets. Bergeron says yes. Comes home to Quebec. Kane said yes too. Oh wow, this team is going to be very, very interesting. And like I was saying, guys, Wonton Bo is just like an extra goalie for us at this point. So trying to train with the Ducks here for a seventh. They say no. I feel like at this point, we might as well just keep them rather than give them away. So next year, guys, I'm going to show what the team is looking like heading into next season. I really do think we could be a playoff team. Check out the chemistry. We get plus five on the entire top six. First line there is Gallagher, Suzuki, and Kane. Second line is Caulfield, Bergeron, and Slavkowski. Slavkowski there is now an 80, playing with a couple of really good players. Maybe you can win the Calder, plus the plus five bonus too. Uh, Dvorak, Doc, and Anderson, I think it's a very solid third line. Evans, Monaghan, Pitlick on the fourth, also not bad. Defensively here, we got Clefbaum and Wyman top pair. Savard, Mastin, second pair, with Edmondson, Timmons on the bottom pair. Wyman's 82 now, he's only making 765k, like, what a steal. And then of course, in goal, guys, we got Tristan Jari now as a starter, 87 overall, with Jake Allen backing him up. Again, uh, this team is quite improved. AHL wise, even very excited. Del Grabowski there on the top line. Connor Zary and Yolanin. Second line's got Nylander, Madden, Shaw. Some guy looking to kind of rebound there. Mysick on the third line with Tyronine. Uh, in terms of defense, actually really young and solid now. Gouli, Barron, Norlander, Harris, Mayu, and Sobolev. Goaltending wise, Primus are starting in the AHL. Montembeau backing them up. So both teams look so much better. And then of course we still have Jaeger, Benson in juniors. So. This team is definitely set up for some success now. I think much better spot than we were in a season ago. Show you guys the ratings here to start the year. 95 offense, 90 defense, 87 goaltending. Patty Kane there in the Montreal Canadiens series. He definitely looks a little bit strange. But uh, like I said, we'll see how this team does in the next episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to someone down below. And as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.